Hello again. So we're going to get started with this micro lecture. This one is on what is a force. As always, you need three or more bullet points worth of notes, one to two sentence summary, and to do your follow-up questions on Google Forms. So to put it kind of bluntly or very simply, a force is a push or a pull. Uh, it doesn't have to be by you. It can be by anything. So anytime something experiences a push or a pull, we can say that that is a force, and that's essentially what forces are. Now, we have many different types of forces and names for them, uh, but that ultimately is what they all boil down to. Now, there are different ways to tell that a force is kind of being applied to something, and one of those ways we've been really familiar with, and it's they cause acceleration. So if we see something accelerating, we know there's a force on it. Here, if we've got a motorcycle um, kind of accelerating, we know that the engine is providing a force to the motorcycle and the motorcycle rider so that they can go faster. Another way that we can tell that a force is being uh, applied is because we can see that there's deformation or indentation. So here we would see this in the form of something kind of gets dented in, uh, kind of like a sponge being squeezed or something along those lines. So there's some sort of kind of movement of the surface, uh, even if the entire object doesn't move. And the third thing they usually cause is pressure. So it can cause one, two, or all three of these things, uh, depending on how you're going to define them and look at them. Uh, but if we imagine here, there's no real indentation on the person's skull, maybe on their kind of softer part, yes. But on the skull, there's not much indentation that we can see, but we can notice, if this happened, a feeling of pressure. And so that would be another thing to look for if we're looking for a, the possibility of a force being applied. So with forces, we know that it's much easier to push a small rock than it is to push a large boulder. So if I were to try and push this and apply a force to it, really easy to do. If I instead were to try and push this guy right here, it would be much more difficult. And that's not really news to anyone. People kind of know this. But let's explore what's what that tells us about forces. And really, the reason why that it's easier to push this small rock than it is this large boulder is because of the fact that there's less stuff to push in this rock. Um, there's less rock there, or to put it in a more scientific way, there's less matter there, um, or atoms or molecules, however you want to define that. Whereas with this large rock, there's more matter, um, more atoms, more molecules, more stuff there to push it. And as a result, it's harder to push. So in science, we call the measure of how much matter or stuff is in an object, it's mass. And so things that have lots of stuff in them, lots of atoms, lots of molecules, etc., um, tend to have higher or greater mass. And things with less tend to have less mass. So this rock, very little mass. Um, and this boulder, a lot of mass. Sorry about that weird notification. That's it for this one. Three or more bullet points worth of notes, a one to two sentence summary, and your follow-up questions on Google Forms.